Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. You know, back in the day, uh, they wrote all these books, and it would be like, you know, home repair for dummies, or French cooking for dummies, or car maintenance for dummies. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, uh, dispensationalism for dummies, right? Just taking it uh, like you had no, absolutely no idea what it is, it, I don't never heard of it or whatever. We just go, we just going to break it down. K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid, like they say, right? Or like we said in the uh, penitentiary, man, come on, let's spin a lap. Let me run this down to you. All right, so let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Thank you for our precious Holy Bible. Now, it just help me in these next few moments to just uh, uh, to make the truth of your word just exceedingly clear, plain, and simple. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So, anyways, you know, uh, uh, the, we'll, we'll go to a, one Bible verse here that will really start everything off. And that's 2 Timothy 2.15, which says this. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, that's the key. He said to study, and he tells you there how to study. You've got to rightly divide. So what does that mean? Well, in the rest of his writings, uh, the apostle Paul uses a word four times. It's dispensation, dispensation, dispensation. So a dispensation comes from the same word as to dispense. So this is basically God's dealing with mankind, God's rules, expectations, or whatever at that time for man. Okay. So, um, I mean, think about it. There are, there are those that are so we're going to call this people that believe, like the Bible says, in rightly dividing by dispensation, they call us dispensationalists, and they call uh, this dispensationalism, all right? But uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, I call it rightly dividing. Uh, how we rightly divide is by dispensation, and that we are dispensationalists. And we do believe in dispensationalism, but it's just rightly dividing is so much easier. And uh, that's basically just context. What is being spoken to who, when, under what circumstances, considering what came before and what came after. So in, in a sense, anybody that knows their Bible at all is somewhat of a dispensationalist, right? Because, I mean, hey... Right divisions, all right? Rightly divide. Where's a right division? Well, one big one, right, would be Old Testament, New Testament, all right? I mean, uh, is there anybody <laughs> that doesn't notice some differences in the way God dealt with people in the Old Testament and as to how he deals with them in the New Testament? Amen? I mean, here in the New Testament, how are we saved? We're saved by grace through faith in the finished work the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's salvation here today. Now, what did they do in the Old Testament? Man, there was the there was the temple, there was the there was the law, there was the sacrificing of the animals, there was there was all kinds of stuff. So something changed. Amen. Something changed. God had dispensed a certain program for them and given them all the instructions for that program in uh Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, laid all that out. All about the priests and the sacrifice and the laws and all that for the nation of Israel. Okay? That was the dispensation of the law for the nation of Israel. And now what are we under? Well, we're under dispensation of what? The church age. Dispensation of grace. Things that differ are not the same. And so, I mean, right away, You've got to be at least somewhat of a dispensationalist if you're going to be honest about it. And you have to admit there's some differences between the Jews in the Old Testament and Christians in the New Testament. Right? Okay. So, but then even if we go back to the Old Testament, 
and we look at what God did with Adam, that was different than what God did with Noah. He ever told Adam to build a boat. He didn't tell Noah to leave a tree alone. And so then after Noah and how he dealt with like Abraham, he, he didn't tell Abraham to leave a tree alone and he didn't tell him to build a boat either. You see where I'm getting at? Something changed. Something changed. What is that? A dispensation. God dispensed something different to Adam that he dispensed to Noah, that he dispensed to Abraham, that he dispensed to the Jews through Moses, that he dispensed after the cross to us today. That's simply that. That is what's right called rightly dividing. That's what makes you a dispensationalist with that you just recognize this clear, plain truth in Scripture. Now, here's what I, I and I, I don't know why they would want to do this. I, 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 the devil gets into it. It's the only reason I, I can, I can uh, uh, fathom of it. But, you know, why someone would not want to see that and make up something else. And that's where you get these people talking about they were saved the same in the Old Testament, and they are, as they're saved today, it's always been by grace. It's always been through faith. And it, here we're looking back at the cross, and back there in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to the cross. Everybody's always saved by grace through faith in Jesus. No. <laughs> they didn't know anything about that. They didn't know anything about that Jesus Christ coming and dying for sins and raising again and taking people's sins away. They knew nothing about the cross. They knew nothing about Jesus. Let me show you. People go to Galatians and they quote this verse. Galatians chapter 3. Let me show you what that verse is really talking about. You can't, that's what rightly dividing is. You can't just pull a verse out of context and apply it where it doesn't go. You have to, you have to observe what it's talking about, who it's talking about, when it's, when it was talking about. Amen. He says right here, uh, Galatians chapter three, and it says, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. And here's what these people will do. They'll run over there and say, see, God gave Abraham the gospel, death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the cross. Yep. Abraham believed the same thing we believe. He was saved the same way we're saved. <laughs> that, that, that is so wrong. Okay. What did, the key verse, what did God, what did he say to him? Saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Okay. Where did God say that to Abraham? Well. That was back in Genesis 1818. 18. Let's go check it out. What was the gospel? You know, the word gospel just means good news. What was the good news that God gave to Abraham back in Genesis 1818? 18, Genesis 18 and 18. Start in verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. There was nothing in there about anybody coming and dying for anybody's sin. There was nothing about a cross in there. He, it was a promise to Abraham regarding his seed being blessed. And Abraham received that promise by faith. And that is a picture of us receiving the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. It's just a picture of faith. It's not the same faith. 
He didn't believe the same thing that we believe today. That's that. That is where they go all wrong and try to mush everything together and don't rightly divide. And what did that verse say? <laughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Well, you start coming <laughs> to God with that all mushed up everything theology, and you'll be a workman that needeth to be ashamed because you won't be rightly dividing the word of truth. Now look with me over in Mark chapter 9. And then we'll put the nail in this thing. Now, Jesus is already on earth. This is before the cross. He's kicking it with his disciples, right? He's got the, he's got the 12, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all, all them guys. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Luke, what? <laughs> I, hey, Peter, James, John, all the, all the rest, right? 12, the 12 disciples. Amen. I, I'm quoting off the Gospels. Here, never mind. Mark chapter 9. Listen to what he tells them. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered unto the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Okay? Now that's death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, there's some gospel there, right? But look at verse 32. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. Even the 12 disciples that Jesus was teaching day at day, each and every day, they did not understand the cross. They were not looking forward to the cross. They didn't have a clue, and I'm going to show you why. Go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Same scenario, right? Uh, look at verse 22. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Then jump down here, verse 44, listen. Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Look at verse 45. But they understood not this saying. And here's why. And it was hid from them that they perceived it not and they feared to ask him of that saying. It was hid from them. Who hid it from them? God hid it from them. God had not revealed it yet. And that is what rightly dividing is. That's what dispensationalism is. God reveals this to this man at this point, reveals this to this man, reveals this to these people. He's dispensing stuff in dispensations. Boom, boom. He had not revealed the gospel of the grace of God, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had not revealed that even to the 12 apostles when they were on earth with Christ. It said it right there, and God told you he hid it from them. Because guess what? Everything was going to change at the cross. After the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then God does what? He dispenses something new. That's what you do. You reveal what is hid. It was hid from the apostles before the cross. But after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, it was revealed to them, and particularly to the Apostle Paul, who God used to reveal all the details of the church age, of the gospel of, Christ, of, of, the gospel of grace, of the body of Christ. All that is revealed mostly to the Apostle Paul, but all the other apostles, all they all got together on it, and, and and that and that's 
where we are today. We are in the dispensation of grace with church age. And we are definitely looking back at the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ by grace through faith. And that's how we're saved. And we receive a finished salvation because how could they be saved the same way we are in the Old Testament when he hadn't even died on the cross yet? He hadn't shed his blood to cover sin yet. They were kind of saved on credit, if you will, back there. But they hadn't received the money yet. See, <laughs> they were like, OK, we go. We're going to come back and take care of y'all. So y'all go just wait over here for a minute. Uh, they didn't receive a finished salvation. We receive a finished salvation. They had to wait. So because it hadn't happened yet. He hadn't shed his blood yet. So what was that? It's a different dispensation. So what do we have to do in order to understand this book? We have to rightly divide the word of truth. And when you do that, see, you can come over here and read something. Then you can come over here and read something and go, wow, that seems like a contradiction. It's saying two different things. Well, that's right. Because it was two different dispensations. He was back here dealing with some other people with another set of rules. And over here, is, this is the new updated version. Amen. So that when, once you do that and you rightly divide and you distinguish exactly who is being spoken to, when, under what circumstances, then every single piece of the puzzle falls perfectly in place. All confusion goes away. All a Parent contradictions go away. Everything falls right into the dispensation in which God gave it. And you have rightly divided the word of truth. I'm not going to go any longer because you know us and our attention spans. Amen. I don't know how any more simple and plain I could put it. The only way to understand your Bible is to rightly divide dispensationally. Any other way, you're just going to mush it all together and you're going to end up in false doctrine. I hope that was helpful to you. <laughs> God bless you. You know I love you. And we'll see you in the next one.